Counter Narrative News bringing you daily news today on Wednesday, the 1st of February 2023. Going to Africa, more specifically the Democratic Republic of Congo, Vatican's Pope Francis is currently on a visit there. He has made some what seems to be quite radical comments in advocating for the rights of African and the Congolese people's rights in particular. Quote unquote, he argues, hands off DRC, hands off Africa. Pope Francis has denounced the quote-unquote enslavement of the Congolese people and has argued that oppressive global powers should stop choking Africa and not treat it as a mine to be stripped or trained to be plundered. They're both direct quotes from Pope Francis. Half of the 90 million people of the DR Congo are Catholic themselves, which in part explains the reasons for the comments by Pope Francis. The Catholic Church has many operations across Democratic Republic of Congo delivering uh, medicine and other services to the people there. It's to be argued that these comments have to be put into context of a few other things that are going on as well. Currently in the world there is an absence of leadership around the demand for independence and the redistribution of labour and natural resources amongst the labouring masses. So Pope Francis's comments sounds like a leftist anti-imperialist political advocacy and sloganeering. It's quite quite clever remarks on, 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 his, on his account because it pushes the interests of the Catholic Church deeper into what many people on the continent feel chimes with their interests. Connected to this is also the desperation of people to move away from Western domination and again to access their, their wealth of their labour and their land with some people in Africa arguing for Russian intervention or deeper Russian military intervention into the continent. Neither the Catholic institution nor the Russian state will be saviors for Africans. Going back to the previous comment, the challenge remains that the people of the world develop their own organizations and leadership that can actually manage going forward a strategy of grassroots struggle to achieve these socialist oriented reforms that are so increasingly desperately needed by the global working classes. Going to Pakistan, the Pakistani Taliban has recently conducted an attack against security, a security community in Peshawar, particularly at a mosque which killed some hundred Pakistani police officers. This is in the context of a dynamic between the Pakistan Taliban has direct relations with the Afghan Taliban and the Afghan Taliban has been brokering negotiations with the Pakistan Taliban and the Pakistani government. These have broke down a year ago. Also just over a year ago, one of the leaders of Pakistan Taliban was killed by the Pakistani state, leading to the Pakistani Taliban to increase its uh, military actions against the Pakistani state, particularly uh, directed at the security institutions and police institutions. This general situation points to two or three things. First of all, that leading global powers, including leading Western states, are meddling in the affairs of Pakistan and Af Afghanistan. And although they claim that the Taliban and other similar formations are somehow their strategic enemies, it's more complicated than that. If we look at the two leaders of Al-Qaeda, Osama bin Laden and Ayman Zawahiri, they were both killed in quite interesting circumstances. Uh, Osama bin Laden was a resident in a middle-class compound in Abbottabad in Pakistan, indicating that the Pakistani authorities knew very well where he was, where he was residing, and probably that the British and the US authorities also knew where he was residing until they decided in 2011 to eliminate him. The second leader, leader of Al-Qaeda, Ayman Zawahiri, was resident in the diplomatic areas of Kabul until his own killing last year, which again points to the fact that most likely the Afghan, Pakistan and their senior Western and Middle Eastern allies all knew about the movements uh, of Al-Qaeda leaders. When it comes to the politics of the Taliban, Thatcher and Reagan in the 80s uh, led the development of the type of supremacist militias that use and abuse religion that produce the type of politics and devastation of the Taliban and the movement that preceded them directly, which are the so-called Mujahideen. This all reflects the fact that people in the region, like people are, are across the global south regions in general, across the globe, 
lack the type of poli mass politics and mass political organizations that is conducive towards the unity of people and not their colonially defined divisions and their aspirations going forward for a better life for themselves, their communities and their families. Going to Central Asia and Kyrgyzstan, a 30-year-old Ayan Alisherov, who was in a Russian jail, has, en has ended up dead in the theatre of conflict in Ukraine. This has led the Kyrgyz parliament to demand an investigation as to how one of their own nationals started from a Russian prison and ended up dead in a battlefield in Ukraine. They are pointing to the Wagner group, closely allied to Putin himself, who have been recruiting from Russian prisons, including Porozhin, the leader of Wagner, who's been directly involved in this manipulative so-called recruitment or perhaps forced recruitment. We can see now many oppressed communities around the periphery of the Russian state and also Central Asia and even Africans have found themselves at one moment in prison, then losing contact with their families and ending up dead in Russia's military operation of invasion, collective punishment and annexation in Ukraine. Finally, in Britain, many trade unions are on strike today, including those trade union members in schools, universities, railways, and also in the public sector around uh, border control in terms of uh, policing the violent colonial borders of Britain. This is one of the biggest days of industrial action in decades in this country. However, the far-right Tory government are refusing to negotiate with striking workers and also obliging other employers not to enter into negotiation with those taking industrial action. On the one hand, the strikes indicate a positive step forward for working class communities inasmuch the strike shows the, com the commonality and the unity of working class interests. On the other hand, there are still hierarchies in these workplaces in the public sector where the poorer and more oppressed workers who are disproportionately black and brown have often no union membership and are on zero hour contracts or through agency work and in a much more precarious uh, situation in terms of their labor rights and employment rights vis-a-vis -vis those more higher up in the hierarchy who are in unions and who have full-time contracts. This division within workplaces and within un trade union work themselves points to the fact that there still is until that the most oppressed workers are in the leadership uh, of the strike momentum and movement that the strike wave in itself reflects on the one hand a positive move but on the other hand still a perpe perpetuation of the hierarchization within workplaces themselves and on the other hand for the far-right Tory state they seem to be in no mood to negotiate with the trade unions themselves and in the trade union leadership many of which who have salaries between 80 and 120,000 pounds a year, indicating that their actual uh, political culture and nature of their political economic existence is closer to the employers than it is to the most oppressed uh, members in their own trade unions. This also points to a systemic corruption based on a neo-colonial relationship to the rest of the world of the trade unions and their bank accounts themselves. But also, this being the case, the trade union leadership have not actually applied a strategy that can put increasing pressure on the government. Arguably, they've gone the other way in implementing one-day strikes, which will put a very minimal pressure on the Tory government itself, and also is really the least that can be done in, in relationship to the growing pressure of the grassroots members of the trade unions who have demanded and who have really delivered these strikes and not the trade union leadership. So going forward, it seems the trade union strike movement, while indicating a positive shift to united working class action, will not win its demands because there is no strategy of escalation uh, in, in, in the approach of industrial action. And also, if we zoom out and understand what the situation the grassroots in Britain as a consequence of decades now of defeats on the left and victories of the far right and the right within the state and the government as manifested in the far right Tory state, we can see that actually 
all of these policies are having the effect of further dividing working class communities from each other. That's Counter Narrative News bringing you daily news today. Thank you to those who have subscribed after our, per, uh, after our first month launching on 1st of January earlier this year. We have reached over 100 subscribers, but we are very keen to continue uh, increasing our reach to further audiences. So please do encourage your friends and contacts across your socials, etc., to subscribe to our YouTube channel, also to our Twitter account at counter underscore CNN. Please continue to like, comment and share. Thank you.